Today is Thursday, February 3rd. What to know about thousands of U.S. troops deployed in response to tensions between Russia and Ukraine and the latest impact of the winter storm slamming several states. Also, the president's new plan to fight deadly cancers, but will it work? Plus, why the top boss at CNN suddenly stepped down. The big reveal is in what it took to come up with the Washington football team's new name. And new rules could be coming for apps like TikTok. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Early this morning, American Special Forces launched an attack against what reportedly could have been a senior al-Qaeda leader. The Pentagon says all Americans got out okay. But reports from the scene say several civilians, including children, may have been hurt or killed. It all started just after midnight in a town in northwest Syria near Turkey. American commandos reportedly surrounded a house and there was a standoff. Witnesses say helicopter loudspeakers blared warnings in Arabic for women and children to evacuate. And then after about two hours, they say a major battle erupted with grenades hurtling toward the Americans and then Americans firing back. The Pentagon has not said much about it yet, just that the mission was successful. But some analysts think the target was a senior leader of a terrorist group since the U.S. sent commandos instead of launching airstrikes. Also, reports out of Washington say U.S. officials were unusually tight-lipped and secretive about it. More information is expected to come out later today. In the next few days, thousands of American troops are headed to Eastern Europe. Of course, it's in response to the ongoing standoff with Russia over Ukraine. The Pentagon says 3,000 service members are going to Poland and Romania temporarily to show support for fellow NATO members. And the idea is this might keep the crisis from spilling over into other countries. The American troops will be traveling from either North Carolina or Germany. And that's on top of the 8,500 more who are still on standby. No matter what, though, the U.S. says it will not send troops all the way into Ukraine. Even though Ukraine is an ally, it's not an actual NATO member, so the U.S. doesn't have any obligation to come to its defense. Instead, the United States has mostly been sending weapons to help Ukraine defend itself. Even still, Russia is calling the new trip deployments destructive and unnecessary. Russia insists it has no plans to invade Ukraine, even though it sent 120,000 troops, weapons, and other supplies to the Ukrainian border, and it's been making demands. In fact, one of those demands was that Western nations not send troops into Eastern Europe. The other big one is to keep Ukraine from joining NATO. Since the U.S. and NATO are not willing to meet either demand, Russia's President Putin says his concerns have been ignored. And there's growing fear Russia will attack Ukraine any day now. Nearby NATO countries worry they could be next. So on top of the U.S., the U.K., France, Spain, the Netherlands, and Denmark have also started positioning troops, ships, or aircraft to NATO's eastern borders. To be continued. As expected, a winter storm is tearing through several American states across three different time zones. Heavy snow has actually been falling since Tuesday in areas from Colorado to Michigan. Some places near Colorado Springs got more than 20 inches of snow. Then this storm started hitting the Midwest. Kansas, Missouri, Illinois, and Indiana got slammed yesterday. It seemed the most snow fell in the middle of Illinois. Snow totals there could reach up to 18 inches. Then late last night, the storm started reaching the south. There, a hard freeze could linger across several states into the weekend. The National Weather Service says there will likely be more than a quarter inch of ice built up all the way from Texas through the Ohio Valley. And one top Kentucky official says this storm is expected to be, quote, one of the most dangerous events in our recent history of record-breaking disasters. That's mostly because there's likely going to be treacherous driving conditions. So with that, several school districts canceled classes, businesses told their workers to stay home, and buses and trains stopped running. Some governors even activated the National Guard to help with recovery efforts. CNN reports today is also shaping up to be one of the worst days for air travel of the past year. Thousands of flights have already been canceled and a lot more are expected to be, especially at busy airports from Texas to Ohio. <music> President Biden has a new plan in the hopes of cutting the death rate from cancer in half over the next 25 years. He's relaunching the so-called Moonshot program he started five years ago when he was vice president. Biden says he's creating a new cancer cabinet in the White House to coordinate the work of several agencies. He also announced a campaign to urge Americans to get screenings that they might have missed during the pandemic. And he's calling on the Cancer Institute to fast track the development of tests that might be able to detect many kinds of cancers at once. The president did not announce any new funding commitments, but he did call on Congress to approve money to create a new research initiative. Cancer experts have some doubts, though, that it'll be possible to reduce the death rate so much. 
They say for it to really go down 50%, it would have to be because cancers are being cured. And one analyst says all this effort might be better spent on initiatives to prevent cancer, like lowering smoking and obesity rates. But Biden says even though his goal is ambitious, it's doable. He pointed to how quickly the world was able to develop cutting-edge COVID-19 vaccines and treatments and said we should bring that same sense of urgency to the fight against cancer. Of course, President Biden has a deep personal interest in cancer research since his son, Beau, died from an aggressive form of brain cancer in 2015. But he's certainly not alone. The Cancer Institute estimates nearly 40 percent of people will be diagnosed with some type of cancer at some point during their lifetimes. More news is coming up, but first, let's take a quick break to thank our sponsor. If you feel like everyone but you is stylish on Instagram, please know a lot of the style icons and influencers do not do it alone. If you need a hand finding pieces that make you look good and feel great, then Stitch Fix has got you covered. You can schedule a fix, and a stylist will send you five pieces that fit your style, size, and price range with no subscription required. Keep what you like and return the rest. Or if you like to shop yourself but don't want to endlessly browse, then check out Stitch Fix Freestyle. It's an online shop built just for you. It's like having your very own clothing store. To get started, take a style quiz so Stitch Fix can learn your preferences from your favorite colors to preferred fits and price ranges. It's time to get looks that are so you. Get started today by filling out your free style quiz at stitchfix.com slash newsworthy and take advantage of free shipping and returns. That's stitchfix.com slash newsworthy to try Stitch Fix. Stitchfix.com slash newsworthy. U.S. government is still working on new regulations for Chinese-owned apps like TikTok. Remember, when former President Trump was in office, he signed executive orders that said those kinds of apps would have to be banned unless they were sold to American parent companies. But those orders faced court challenges, and President Biden ended up canceling them altogether. Still, his administration kept looking into potential security concerns. Now the Commerce Department is proposing new rules that would expand government oversight on those apps. The concern is foreign governments, like China, could be able to get data from American users and leverage it in a way that could be a national security risk. So new rules could require apps to go through audits so the U.S. could independently scrutinize their code and what data they collect. So far, no response from TikTok. But in the past, it's said it doesn't share information with the Chinese government anyway, even though its parent company ByteDance is based in Beijing. TikTok is easily the most popular app out of China, since it was actually the most popular app, period, in both the Apple and Google app stores here in the U.S. last year. And for now, anyway, it's not going anywhere. The Commerce Department does not have a timeline for when the rules will be finalized. It's nearly two years in the making, but the Washington football team finally has a new name, the Commanders. After 87 years with its old name, which is considered a racial slur to Native Americans, and two years as just the Washington football team, the organization revealed the new name, uniforms, and logo yesterday. But it was a process to get there. Team officials sifted through 40,000 fan submissions and narrowed it down to 1,200 potential names. They did surveys and research. They even did focus groups with fans and cold-called ticket holders to see what name resonated the most. The team president and head coach said they knew they wanted to pay tribute to the military, and they did with the name The Washington Commanders. On this weekend's special edition Saturday episode, we're talking more about the impact of Native American names and imagery in sports with a sociologist and researcher, and we check in with the so-called mascot guru. So be sure to listen this Saturday. CNN's top boss is stepping down because he kept his romantic relationship with a fellow executive under wraps. The network's president, Jeff Zucker, said he was wrong to hide the relationship with executive vice president, Allison Gullist. She will stay with the company. Their relations came to light during the network's internal investigation into former anchor Chris Cuomo. Despite being CNN's top-rated host, Cuomo was fired last year during an inquiry into whether he helped his brother, then New York Governor Andrew Cuomo, fend off sexual harassment allegations. As for what's next for one of the most powerful positions in American media, the CEO of CNN parent company Warner Media says three top CNN executives will team up to take over Zucker's old duties for now. Several big name artists were nominated for induction into one of music's most exclusive clubs. They include Dolly Parton, Rage Against the Machine, Lionel Richie, Pat Benatar, Carly Simon, and Eminem just to name a few. If Eminem does add a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame membership to his 15 Grammys, he'll become only the seventh hip-hop act ever to be inducted. While the Rock Hall of Fame has been criticized before for not having a lot of female artists inducted, last year's list included Tina Turner, The Go-Go's, and Carole King. And this year marks the most women to be nominated in the past 30 years. 
The winners will be announced in May with a ceremony to come in the fall. And if you want to say in all this, fan voting is now open until April 29th on the Hall of Fame's website. We'll link to it in today's episode notes. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Thing to Know Thursday. But first, a quick word from our sponsor. In 2022, I'm looking forward to continuing to commit to and even improve this podcast while also being there for my family. So I've got my hands full, and I know you have a lot going on this year as well. So with all that running around we'll be doing, why not have a new pair of shoes that will last the whole journey? The Rothy's experience is always a combination of quality, comfort, and style. I know that everything I buy there will last a long time and be ready to wear out of the box with no blisters or hassle. Rothy's has both casual and dressy styles for both men and women, so you'll always find exactly what you need. Insanely comfortable flats, sneakers, loafers, ankle boots, and more. I actually have a new pair of flats on the way right now. And it's such an added bonus that everything Rothy's makes is better for the planet. They've repurposed millions of water bottles into their signature thread that goes into every single one of their products. Hit the new year in stride with a fresh pair of Rothy's. New customers get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash newsworthy. That's rothys, R-O-T-H-Y-S, rothys.com slash newsworthy. Again, new customers get $20 off your first purchase at rothys.com slash newsworthy. Now back to Thing to Know Thursday. The Beijing Winter Olympics kick off tomorrow. And since we're still in the middle of a global pandemic, the Olympic athletes and other attendees will go through some of the strictest COVID-19 prevention protocols ever created for an event. Remember, the general public is not allowed to go and watch, but 11,000 people from around the world are expected in Beijing. So to try and avoid COVID at all costs, these super strict measures are in place like a closed loop system. That's meant to shut off the outside world completely. Inside the loop are all the actual competitions and training venues. So to get inside, everyone has to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 or to have quarantined for 21 days. They also have to test negative for the virus twice. And for anyone who tests positive while there, they're taken to an isolation facility or hospital. Also, people who are going to the games cannot use public transportation. They have a taxi service dedicated just for them, and it can only be used within the loop. N95 masks are required everywhere, all the time, except for training, competing, eating, drinking, or sleeping. And they'll follow the traditional rule to stay six feet apart from each other. And get this, spectators who want to support athletes can clap, but they cannot shout, cheer, or sing since that's more likely to spread the virus. They're also not allowed to talk in enclosed spaces like elevators. And that's just to name a few of the many, many rules on the list. There will even be staff all around the area to make sure people are following these rules. Let the games begin. Well, on Friday. All right. Thank you so much for listening and for sharing the show. We'll be back with much more news tomorrow. Until then, have a great day. 